Welcome to online learning prepared by foreign teachers in grade six, Anuban Chunbury School. This video recording is for educational purposes only. Okay, better this time. Again, I hope you can remember my name now. My name is Teacher Edward, and uh, I am your science and uh, your health teacher. Okay. So, if I remember correctly, uh, we study about the uh, separation technique last time, right? Uh, Jinipa, can you still remember what we studied on Monday? What did we study on Monday? Nata what? Anybody who can uh, still remember what did we study last Monday? Anybody? So, Pakrit? Suntida, can you still remember what did we study last week? You can open your book. Yeah, you can always open your book and you can open there. Where, where did we stop? Where did we stop? Are we done with uh, the first part of the separation technique about shifting? Are we done with shifting? Yes or no? Yes or no? Uh-huh. Yeah, you can turn on your, yeah, okay, there. Okay, I will try to unmute all of you. Are we done with shifting, yes or no? Yes. Okay, good, perfect. Now, uh, this, uh, we study about the separation of solids, right? And of course, we study, I will highlight some of this here. Uh, we study shifting. Right, finish already. And we study, I, I mean, we don't need to study this. The first one, picking out my hand, right? Because it's very simple. We use our hands. Okay. And uh, who is talking? Natawat? Do you want to say something? Natawat? No. Okay. So please uh, turn off your microphone if you are not going to uh, speak. All right. So uh, this afternoon, we will be focusing on this part here, using magnets, all right? So using magnets will be our topic for uh, this afternoon. Okay, so oops, moving. Okay. So these are the vocabularies that we've learned last time, property, okay. So here, yeah. who can still remember what this is? Who can still remember what this is? Metal detector. This is a metal detector, right? So this is uh, this will help us to easily separate the metal from the non-metals. All right. So that is the purpose of the metal detector. All right. Now, uh, since this is a continuation of our study on Monday. I provided some of the vocabulary words here. Okay. The first word here is metallic. I want you to turn on your microphone and I want you to read it with me. Number one, metallic. Metallic. Okay. Metallic. metallic. Number, number two, non-metal. Non-metal. Non -metal. Number three, magnetic. 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 Number four, attract. 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 Okay, perfect. I will try to mute all of you. Okay, so we're going to study them. Oh my God, I wasn't able to change the picture here. Wait, uh, I will pause this sharing. Okay, and I will try to edit some of this because, okay. Now, uh, these words are actually, uh, I'm sure you are familiar with this, no? I'm sure all of you are fam familiar with this. So, okay. Almost done. Okay. So, let's go back here. Okay. So, the word is metallic. 
Okay. Metallic means relating to or resembling metal or metals. For example, an alloy. Okay, an alloy. I think you have it in your book. A double L O Y, right? A double L O Y is a mixture of metal with the non metal. I am referring in page 31 in your book. So that is a metallic, okay? That is a metallic for, or a spoon is a metallic object, right? A spoon is a metallic object, okay? Uh, we, we also have a metal ruler can be considered metallic as well, all right? And uh, the opposite of the metallic objects are the non-metal, okay? The non-metals are, they have this element or substance that is not metal. Example is wood, uh, paper, plastic, glass, uh, rubber, okay? So those are non-metal objects or substances. Magnetic, Magnetic means exhibiting or relating to magnetism, okay? So that is the meaning of the word magnetic. Uh, for example, you have a magnet. If you have a magnet, do you know what a magnet is, right? Okay, so Prakrit, do you know what is a magnet? Uh, so Prakrit, do you know what is a magnet? Yes. Okay, so if you're going to uh, put a magnet, on uh, something like your phone, on the you know printer or the wall, some uh, some materials or some object will actually be magnetic. Okay, some materials will be attracted to your magnet, but some are not. Okay, so that is the meaning of the word magnetic. Uh, the next word here is uh, attract. The word attract means to exert a force on that is directed toward the source of the force. For example, you have a, you have a, you have a spoon, okay? Or let's say a paper clip, metal or steel paper clip, and then you're going to use a magnet. What will happen? So uh, the the steel paper clips will actually be attracted to uh, what is this? to the magnet, okay? So it will be attracted to the magnet. The metals are attracted to the magnet. So our lesson for today is separating solids using magnets, all right? Parinya, do you want to say something? Parinya, do you want to say something? Okay, good. Uh, all right. So for us to review on what we studied last time, I will uh, I will let you watch this video again. Okay. So this is a video of sifting, right? So we're going to watch this uh, video again. All right. Separation by sieving. Materials required: sieve, wheat flour, common salt. Dry pulses, pebbles, straw. Method. Take about 10 grams of wheat flour and in it mix some dry pulses, few pebbles and few pieces of straw. Now take a sieve and put the mixture in it. Place a clean plate under the sieve and gently rock it. You notice that wheat flour passes through sieve, but the pulse, pebbles and straw are left in the sieve. Why did the pulses, pebbles and straw not pass through sieves? It is because the size of these substances is much larger than the holes of sieve. Take about 10 grams of wheat flour and in it mix about 5 grams of common salt. Sieve the mixture as stated above. You notice that no common salt or wheat flour is left in the sieve. Why? It is because the size of holes in the sieve are far bigger 
than size of the particles of wheat flour or common salt. Thus, they easily pass through the holes of sieve. Conclusion Separation by sieving is only possible if the size of one kind of particles is bigger than the size of holes in the sieve and the size of other kind of particles is smaller than the size of holes in the sieve. Okay, so I want you to copy this one on your notebook so that you will be able to study or to able to remember uh, this uh, shifting. Okay, shifting. So you're going to write there separation by sieving. Okay, so the meaning of the word sieving here, look at this. The word sieving it also means sifting. Okay, sieving also means sifting. Okay, so I want you to copy this in your notebook. Oops, this one isn't high. Sifting. All right. So uh, I want you to copy there. Separation by sifting is only possible if the size of one kind of particle is uh, bigger than the size of holes in the sieve and the size of other kind of particles is smaller than the size of holes in the sieve. Okay. So that is the definition of uh, sifting, okay? In case it is not very clear for you. Okay, please raise your hand if you're done. Kindly raise your hand if you're finished uh, copying so that we'll be able to proceed. Okay, not done yet. Okay, uh, Jirayu and Tanapon are finished already. So, okay, good job. That is not very long, right? It's not very, very long. Uh, again, I would like to request all of you to please uh, turn on your video. Okay, please turn on your video, all of you, so that I will be able to see your faces here when I scroll. Yeah. Uh, very good. Uh, what about Puri Sawapol? I can see Lalada here. Okay, good. Uh, Tichet, Jirapat, Natchuda, Natchada, Tanpisit, Purichaya, please turn on your video here. People here, Tanpisit, Purichaya, number 35, Pungnarit, number 29, Suwapich, Chayangkul, Wacharawit, please uh, turn on your video. Okay, good. So I think all of you are done. Okay, so I think uh, many of you are done. So we are going to proceed. Okay, so that is the definition of sifting. Now, uh, I think you answered this one as well, right? Did you answer this as also? Yes. Uh, what page is this in your book? Page, what page is this in your book? Hmm? Finish answering this, right? Are you done answering this? Yes, yes. or no? 
Okay, yes. what what page is this in your yes. book? 28. 28. So you're done answering this in uh, page 28. What about in page 30, this one? Are you done with this? Yes. Done as well, okay? So uh, let's review this one because this is very, very helpful for our study for this afternoon. Uh, if we're going to place a magnet above a mixture, wait, I will mute all of you. Okay, if we're going to mix sugar, sand, and iron fillings together, and then you're going to place a magnet above the mixture, what is, your, what is our answer here? What is our answer here? What do you observe? They were attracted to the magnet. Okay, what about number 12? What's your answer, number 12? Oh. Okay, so Nataya said it correctly. The iron fillings were attracted to the magnet. There, we uh, the word attracted appeared. Okay. What about here in uh, number two B? What did you answer, Kimika? Huh? What's your answer, number three? Here's number three here. Okay. Me. Uh, what is your answer for number two, letter B? Can you read? Uh, wait. Okay. Number 12, kindly turn on your video. All right. So number three is still looking for uh, maybe her in your book. Okay, uh, let's ask Nata what. What is your answer for number two, letter B? The iron feelings are magnetic. Okay, uh, so that is also the reason that the iron feelings are magnetic. That is the reason why the sand and the sugar are not attracted to the magnet. Why? Because they are? They are what? Magnetic. They are non-magnetic. Very good. They are non-magnetic. Sand and sugar are non-magnetic. Only the iron fillings. So if we are going to separate uh, a mixture, like uh, there's a mixture like this, sand, sugar, and iron fillings, and we need to get the iron fillings, we can easily separate them by using magnet. Okay. And here we can separate as well the mixture of sand and sugar by adding water. All right. So here in junkyards, okay, I think you know this one, right? I think you have this one in your book as well. And I think you know what is a junkyard, okay? Uh, it is a place where we throw our, you know, uh, trash or junkyards like. Uh, like refrigerator that uh, are already, you know, that is already broken. So we put them in the junkyards. If there's a mixture of wood, uh, metal, and a lot of materials there in the junkyard. Now, I want you to understand this one or this electromagnet because this is very, very important and this is very uh, interesting for you. Okay, the word electromagnet. But before that, let's read here. Uh, let's read. Iron, cobalt, and nickel are common magnetic materials. Okay, so what are the common ma uh, magnetic materials? Iron, cobalt, nickel are common magnetic materials. All these three, iron, cobalt, nickel, are uh, all metals. All right? So an alloy, it is a mixture of metal and another metal. So that is an alloy. If we're going to mix... Uh, Nickel and uh, copper, okay? So that can be uh, an alloy. You can consider that one an alloy. For example, a bike is made up of alloy, okay? Because if we make our uh, bike uh, aluminum, pure 100% aluminum, it will become very, very expensive, all right? So that is why uh, some uh, bikes are made up of alloys. You know, a mixture of different metals, okay? So, uh, alloys that contain these metals are also magnetic. We can use magnets, okay, here. 
here's the the thing that I want you to uh, highlight there in your book. We can separate. Uh, we can use magnets to separate magnetic uh, substances from non-magnetic substances. There. I want you to highlight that one in your book so that you will be able to understand or you can be able to study that at home. I will repeat. We can use magnets to separate magnetic substances from non-magnetic substances. Apiwit, do you want to say something? Your microphone is on. Okay. Done. Now, let's go back to this word that I uh, put inside the box. Electromagnets. What are electromagnets? Nata, what? Do you know what is a magnet? Or have you seen a magnet before? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, can we control the magnet? If we have a magnet, can we control it? Like we can turn it on and turn it off? Yes or no? No. No. Now, that is actually the main difference between a magnet and an electromagnet. Here, in junkyards, electromagnets are used to pick up scrap metal. Okay, here, metal for recycling. Okay, here, another thing here that we need to read. The magnetism of electromagnets can be easily turned on and off. Okay, can you see that? Can be easily turned on and turned off. Easily turned off and on. This allow scrap metal to be moved from one place to another. Wow. So if we're going to use this one, I think I have a video here. Okay, look at this. This is just a metal. Okay, this is just a metal. But if you turn it on, then it will become a magnet. I will repeat, this is only a metal, okay? But if you're going to turn the electromag electromagnetism, then it will become a magnet. But if you turn it off, then it will not become a magnet anymore. So uh, let's see what this thing do. All right, so I want to ask you a question. What is the difference between a magnet and an electromagnet? Electromagnet, can, we can control. We can control, very good. What else? Can we use a real magnet here, yes or no? Can we use a real magnet in a junkyard? Yes or no? Anybody who wants to answer? Napichaya, if this is a real magnet, do you think it, this is, uh, it will still work to separate metal and non-metal? 
Yes. Yes, if we use a real magnet. Are you sure? Because if this is a real magnet, it can attract the metal, right? But it cannot repel or it cannot move the metal there. Because if this thing will go to this place here, okay, there, okay? When the, if you want to move the metal here to this place, you need to turn it off, right? But if this is a real magnet, can we turn off a real magnet? No, right? So it is impossible for this thing to be put here. It will not come off, right? So that is the, yeah, napichaya is, is okay. Okay, so that is the main reason that uh, electromagnet is better. We can control, we can switch on and switch off. And also we can make it, uh, we can make the magnet or the power of magnetism to become very, very strong, okay? So if you want to carry heavy metals, we can uh, put the, uh, we can add more electricity to it, then it will become uh, stronger, all right? Now, look at this. Magnetic separation, okay, here. Magnetic separation is used to extract, okay? Extract means able to separate metals from ores, okay? So the metal, or you still remember what is an ore? Can you still remember what is an ore? An ore is a rock that have metal in it, right? So uh, we, can, we are going to extract the metals from the ores. Metal ores are ground into powder, and placed into a belt which carries it past a magnetic ruler. So, for example, I will put the ores here. Example, I will put the ores here. There. Okay. If this will be the ores. Okay. Now, uh, when this ores will go here, will go down. Okay. Then down. Then here. It becomes what? What what happens next? What happens to the ore here? It becomes anybody? What happened? Anybody who wants to share what happened? What happened to the ore? Yes, Nata, what? Uh, the metal, the ore will a bit the magnetic roller but the stone will go to uh, the cup okay thank you so uh it becomes powder right it becomes a powder okay it becomes a powder it means it becomes smaller okay can you see this one so what i believe is that the uh what are the different colors that you can see here uh, there is like the small one, right? There is there are like the small black ones, like this one. So if my uh, if what I believe is true, then I think these are the metal ones. Okay, I think the big ones are the metal ones, and the small one with the brown, I think they are the rock. Okay, or they are uh, like this. Okay. So I think they are not metals. So the question is, the question is, in which container, look at this, in which container do the non-magnetic, so I will write here first, uh, rock, rock, and uh, metal. Okay, so rock and metal. So a rock is non magnetic non magnetic and the metal is magnetic right so magnetic okay so uh, i put it there so that you will not be confused a rock is a non non magnetic and the metal there in the ore is magnetic all right so the question is where will the in which container do the non magnetic or the rock okay or, or Sorry, or the rock will go to the container A or to the container B. Which will, where will the 
non-magnetic. The non-magnetic here is the rock. Where will the rock go? To the cup uh, A or B? I want you to message me. Message me so that I will be able uh, where, which container. I want you to answer here. You message me. Chat. Which container do the non magnetic waste particles which container did the powdered rock fall into okay so what's the answer a or b uh, there are there is only one student who answered you message me chat a or B, I want to know how many of you will answer A, how many of you will answer B. Okay, good. Very good. Nataya finished answering. Okay, don't drop porn. Uh, Natawat finished answering already. Okay. Okay, done? A or B, A or B. Okay. So based on your answers here, container A, container A, uh, I think there are only two students who answered. I think there are only two students who answered B so far. All of you answered A. Okay. So what I believe is that since this thing is magnetic, can you see this, uh, this thing, this circle one? Yeah. Okay. So this is a magnetic ruler. So since this is a magnetic ruler, I believe that I believe that the metal will go here. Okay, so the metal will go there, but the rocks will just drop right here, straight, right? So this might be the this can be could be the I mean this is for the rock and uh, this one could be uh, for the metal, okay? So that's what I believe based on the pictures or based on the scenario that uh, is given to us. Okay, so you understand this one? Yes or no? Do you have any question? Do you have any question? For example, uh, we can use this one in uh, bauxite. Okay, as we all know, bauxite is an ore where we can get the aluminum. Okay, so if you put the bauxite here, then it will become a small particles or powdered ore. Then it can be easily separated, right? If we can separate them easily because uh, they are already in a powdered, uh, they are already into powder. Now let's come to our practice time. I think we will be able to finish uh, today very early. So I want you to copy this one. I want you to copy this on your notebook, okay? Separating solids. So you are given a mixture of sand, okay? Sand, iron nails, and plastic beads, okay? So I want you to copy this on your notebook and I want you to answer, okay? So you have answer here, number one. And uh, answer here, number two. Uh, here, maybe number three. I'll need answers. Yes, uh, you need to answer this on your notebook because it is not in your book. Okay, so I want you to copy this on your notebook. Okay, this will be number six and this one will be number seven. All right, so maybe I will be giving you five minutes. Okay, thank you for your responses. All right. So there are only seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I want to put a sign here so that you will not be confused. Number six and number seven can be interchanged, right? The answer for number six and number seven can be interchanged. And the answer for number three and number four can be interchanged as well. Okay. So I will be giving you uh, maybe five minutes to answer this.
Okay, so five minutes. I'll be giving you plenty of time for you to finish because you need to copy that one, copy and answer. So it may take a five minute time. Okay. ทุกทุกขวดสลายผลิตจากรีไซ Okay, you're done. Time, I will just check your attendance. Excuse me, Lalada. What is your number again, Lalada? Lalada, what is your number, Lalada? You don't have a number here. Ah, Lalada is number twenty-two.
only have 35 seconds left before we're going to answer. So uh, the idea that is presented here, we can use the techniques, uh, the things that we already study, shifting and uh, using magnets, yeah, right? So we can use these techniques in order to separate this mixture. Shifting and using magnets. Since there are two methods here, yeah, separation method, separation method here as well, we're going to use them, yeah? Number one and number five, we're going to use this. Okay, time's up. Time's up. Okay, time's up. Okay, time's up. Okay, time's up. Oops. Okay, done. So, uh, we are going to... Yeah, how many are finished? I can see 19 students who are raising their hand. I think uh, half are finished, but the other half are still not done. Paradi, not finished. Jennifer, you done? Jennifer, where's your book? Putisan, Panatat, Tanakit, Natcha, number 21, Tanakit. Are you done? Tanpisit, Viriporn. Turn on your video and uh, I want to see if you're done or not. Or not yet. Okay, before we're going to answer. All right, so we are going to check now. Uh, you can lower your hands. Lower your hands now. Okay, you can lower your hands. Very good. Thank you. Very good. All right. Perfect. Wow. You guys can follow instruction very, very quickly. Okay, so here. Yeah. So let's answer now. What separation technique did you use for number one? Nata what? What is uh, your answer? Or maybe I will uh, turn on all your microphone, right? I will turn on your mic. So that you'll be able to, oh no, wait, this is wrong. Uh, well, this one, and I will uh, unmute all of you. I will try to unmute all of you. Okay. Uh, what is your answer for number one? Shifting. Shifting. Okay. So we will follow the shifting here. So if your answer is shifting there for number one, what did you write here in number two? Uh, Satawit, what if shifting is here for number one? If you answered using magnets in number one, do not put wrong to your book, okay? If you answered using magnets here in number one, here, yeah, if you write using magnets, it is, is still correct. It is also correct, but do not mark it now. Let's focus on number one, uh, shifting first. So if shifting there, what is the thing that you put here in what in number two? Sand. Okay, sand. Very good. Sand. Perfect. Sand. And here, uh, what did you write here in what? Iron nails. Iron nails and? Plastic beads. Plastic beads. Perfect. Very good. Wow. Plastic beads. I'm amazed. You guys are very uh, very good. What about number five? What did you answer here? Using magnet. Using magnet. Okay. So what are the things that can be separated here? Iron nails and plastic. Here, plastic beads. Very good. Plastic beads. All right. So I would like to tell you that here number three and number four can be interchanged. The answers can be interchanged and number six and number seven can be interchanged as well. All right. But look, listen, everybody. Listen, everybody. If your answer in number one, who answered number one using magnets? Who answered using magnets here? Who answered using, ah, yeah, Chunpira. You answered using magnets. Okay, Satawi, Tonrapon, and Pirapong as well. So what did you answer here for number two, Chunpira? Iron nail. Iron nails. Okay, so that is also correct, right? That is also correct. Now, if you put iron nails here, so you should be able to put sand here. Sand and uh, plastic beads. All right. And here, you'll be able to write uh, shifting. Okay, shifting. And then here, we can use plastic beads. 
oops, wrong spelling, plastic, plastic beads, and here is the sand. All right, now, this is also correct, right? Well, like, I think Chun Tida answered this one like this. Okay, so if your answer is like this, correct. Uh huh. So you're going to mark there 7 over 7. You can write there 7 over 7 if your answer is like this. All right, but if your answers are the other one, like, uh, where is that? Okay, if your answer is shifting for number one, it is also correct. Shifting here, and then uh, sand, and here is uh, iron nails and plastic beads, and here plastic beads, and uh, this one iron nails is also correct. Okay, so who got this one correct? Seven over seven. Raise your hand. Ah, this one is very simple, right? Very simple, yeah? I can see that many of you got this one correctly. Okay, Panatat as well and Supakrit. Very good, very good. All right, so well, let's proceed to the next part here. We're not done? Okay, okay, okay. So here, uh, I think this is found in your book page. What page is this? I'm not sure now. I think this is in page 32. Two. Yeah, this is found in page 32. So since this is very, very simple, uh, maybe I will uh, give you, uh, what is this? Maybe I will give you two minutes to answer this one uh, because this one is very, very simple and I'm sure uh, that will be very easy for you to answer. All right. Okay. Good, perfect. There. Uh, that is, uh, there are, I think there are three questions there. Yeah, correct. So one, two, three questions. So three questions only. And uh, there are five answers. Okay, five answers. So uh, two minutes starts now. Page 32. Okay, Tanapun done. Nataya finish as well. Okay, two. What about not what? Do not forget to raise your hand if you're done so that I'll be able to count how many or how many are you finished. Mm -hmm. Okay, there are uh, 14 students already. Good. Load. Picture here. I will take a picture. Okay. okay. And then uh, I will scan that again. Okay. okay. Good. Oh, okay. So uh, let's check. Let's check your answers. I think all of you are done. And it's already uh, 152. So let's check now. 
Let's check. Uh, what is your answer? I want all of you to turn on your microphone. Turn on your mic and uh, we're going to answer this together. All right. And uh, if it is possible, you can turn on your video yeah, and your microphone so you'll be able to answer correctly. Who answered letter D for number one? Lower your hands, lower your hands, lower your hands so that I'll be able to see there. Lower, lower, lower. All right. Who answered letter A? Who answered letter A for number one? Nobody? What about uh, letter B? Who answered letter B? Only two substances that are chemically combined is a definition of mixture. No? What about letter C? Two or more substances that are chemically combined. Raise your hand. Oh, what about letter D? Who answered letter D? Oh, wow, 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 wow. All of you answered letter D? Ah, very good. You have unity. But your answer is, let's see. The answer here is, Letter C. Oh, yes, the answer is letter C. Two or more substances that are chemically combined. Yeah. A lot of you, a lot of you got the wrong answer. Okay, lower your hand, lower your hand. Lower, lower, lower. Okay, good. Okay, so there, that's letter C. What about uh, <clears throat> number two? Which of the following mixtures can be separated by using a sieve? Letter A, a mixture of nitrogen gas and oxygen gas. Who answered letter A? Who answered letter A? Raise your hand. Nobody. Ah, good. What about letter B, a mixture of water and gravel? Okay, a mixture of water and gravel. Okay, so that is letter B. That is correct. Very good. That is correct. Okay, you can lower your hands now. And what about letter C? A mixture of large and fine flower particles. Who answered letter C? Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, the answer is letter C, letter B, and letter C. Because a mixture of oil and water cannot be separated using a sieve. It's only letter B and letter C. Please lower your hands now. Thank you. Okay, very good. Good job. Okay. Good job, good job. Right. Now let's proceed to question number three. <laughs> Which of the following mixtures can be? Somebody's talking. I can hear the sound of your baby brother. A peewit? Ah, yeah, it's a peewit. I can hear the sound of uh, the baby brother laughing. Okay, okay. So, which of the following mixtures can be separated by using a magnet? Letter A, a mixture of iron fillings uh, and nickel coin. Who answered letter A? Raise your hand. Piradich only. And Sopakrit as well. Answer letter A. Lower your hand, please. Lower your hand. All right, lower your hand. Okay. What about who answered letter B? A mixture of iron fillings and steel paper clips. Who answered letter B? Nobody? Very good. What about letter C? A mixture of iron fillings and sand. Can we separate them using a magnet? Uh-huh. A lot of you answered. 16, 15. Very good. So letter C is uh, correct. And uh, the next letter is letter D. Who answered letter D? A mixture of iron fillings and water. Iron fillings and water. Can we use the magnet to separate that? The mixture of iron fillings and water? Yes. So, 
And so there is letter C and letter D. So, for example, Nataya is like swimming in the swimming pool, uh, swimming in the pool, and then uh, she dropped uh, money, coins there in the swimming pool. So, she can use magnet, okay? She can use magnet to collect the coins, right? She can use the magnet to separate the coins from the water, okay? If you drop something metallic, like a uh, metal or let's say a key for the motorcycle or something like that it was dropped in water or in the pool we can use a magnet to uh, get that metal key all right so uh who got uh, five over five here who got five over five raise your head who got five over five Who got five over five? Only three students got perfect. Is it very difficult? Who got four points? Who among you here got four points? Four over five. Ah, yeah, yeah. So you got the wrong answer for number one, right? Am I right? Yeah, all of you answered the uh, letter D instead of letter C in number one. All right. So uh, I want you to lower your hands now. We're about to end our class. Good job, everybody, <laughs> for doing your best. <clears throat> what about Jennifer? How much is your score, Jennifer? Jennifer, number four? four? Four, okay. What about Lalada, my friend? Four. Okay, good. What about Panatat? Four. Okay. So who among you here got five? Where are those students who got five points? Uh, there were like two or three students who got five points. Nataya, how much is your score? Four as well. Four. Ah, I see. You're all of you were, got the wrong answer in number one. Okay. So uh, that's all for today's online learning. So let's uh, have a review. Okay, these are the, uh, the vocabularies that we've learned last Monday. I would like to uh, recap because this is a continuation. Mixture, soluble, insoluble, separate, methods, contaminant, ores, and sieve. Okay, and today uh, I gave you another uh, vocabulary words. I, I gave you four new words, metallic. Non-metal, non magnetic, and attract, okay? So I hope you will be able to understand and uh, no, remember these words, okay? So that you will be able to use them in the future. <clears throat> now review. <clears throat> if a mixture is consists of metallic and non-metallic substances, we can use magnet to separate them okay very easy all right so if it is like flour and coins flour and paper clip sand and uh, coins we can use uh, we can use magnet to separate them easily okay and it is the faster way to separate them so i hope you uh you study or I mean you learn something for today about using magnets and about electromagnets. Okay. <clears throat> and this is the these are the videos in YouTube if you want to watch them again. These are the uh, the videos separation by sieving, sifting as well in the construction site, electromagnet at the scrapyard. Okay, so those are the videos. Those are the link where did I get the videos? So reminder, <clears throat> I heard that there's a, a spike of uh, COVID-19 cases here in Chunburi again, right? Uh, Natawat, do you have vaccine already, Natawat? Not yet. What about Nataya? Do you have vaccine already? Vaccine? Okay, don't have. Teacher Edward don't have as well. So... Uh, for the meantime, since we are not vaccinated yet, 
uh, we should remember to stay safe from COVID-19. Stay home, practice social distancing, wash our hands regularly for 20 seconds, sanitize our hands regularly, don't touch our eyes, mouth, and nose, and always wear a mask. Okay, especially if you are in a big group, okay, you need to wear masks and observe social distancing always. So I will stop the video recording here. Thank you for listening. Do not go away yet.